reason for us to be in court fighting about this on the on the ownership interest for sure. It's clear. It doesn't take it doesn't take a circuit court judge to tell you that. It's in the documents that they submitted. Thank you very much. May I ask Mr. Heyman a quick question? Yes, sir. So that the record is clear, which uh, riparian littoral rights are you um, alleging are implicated by the city's action? Uh, I believe that the uh, the the channel that this allows the cut through for, because once you get out in there, I mean, there's no cut through without a channel going through. I believe that that implicates our right of access to the waters, to unimpeded. Uh, we have it in, in, in conjunction with the public in general, but we also have uh, the access. Now, is that access irrespective of the um, ability to build a dock, or is that access included in the ability to build I, a dock? I think that it's uh, without regard to whether you include the dock. I think that, that people who wanted to launch out of there uh, on a kayak, on a sailboat, on a, on, a, uh, on a windsurfer, on any other thing as they come and go, that they're uh, impacted by that channel and the boat traffic that comes in because, that's, uh, because there's a... Each of those parties has some right. We look at it in the canal, even though there's no riparian littoral rights, but we've duplicated that with our 45 degree angle rule. And that's because we're sharing that access in across the water into our, into our docks. And so, and so from, from the way that this is all laid out, there should be a 45 degree angle that they're heading out as opposed to coming across us and implicating our ability, impacting our ability to come and go and access. And yes, I believe that there's still room to say, David, that there's a right to wharf out. All right, thank you. Thank you. I need cross-examination. Okay, due to the health of your city council members, we're gonna take a five minute break here before we open the public comment portion. Five minutes. Thank you for that. Okay, we are now back in session and we will offer them time for rebuttal. Yes, thank you. I'd like to call Mr. Wilson back up. Um, he has some things he'd like to address in rebuttal. <coughs> Yes, for the record, Hans Wilson, and just to let you know, I have been sworn in. Uh, there were some comments regarding the ability of Colony Point to create boat slips in the aquatic preserve. And just so everybody understands, under the chapter 1820 of the Florida Administrative Code, the aquatic preserve limits you to a, a boat mooring facility that goes no deeper than minus four feet, mean low water, and it limits you to either 20% of the width of the water body or 500 linear feet. So if Colony Point were to consider seeking boat docks, uh, the actual creation of the channel would provide for them that minus four foot water depth adjacent to the channel at a much less distance than the 500 feet allowed by rule. Without any kind of dredging activity in that location, a boat dock would actually have to go out far further than the 500 feet allowed by rule and would not be able to achieve the minus four foot mean low water minimum water depth. Now that's exclusive of what the city code mandates in terms of the 80 foot maximum extension into the water body. So just kind of outlining for you the challenges for Colony Point should they decide to pursue boat docks, it backs us into the fact that by creating the channel, it actually creates a greater opportunity for them to secure boat docks in that location than otherwise. On my, yep. the, um, the Florida Second District Court of Appeal in a court decision, 5F LLC versus dressing, established what the extent of the um, common law riparian right to wharf out to build a dock might be. And they said that it's the um, uh, line of navigability or the low water line, whichever is uh, closer, essentially. Where is the, uh, the low water line in relation to Colony Point and in relation to the proposed um, dredge channel? Well, the low water line is in areas where the riprap is below the water surface, it falls at the face of the seawall. And there's some other areas where the riprap was you get to the, the western side of Colony Point with the east, I mean, with the north to south alignment of the seawall, 
as you get into the southern portion, that riprap that's there, that mean, high water, that mean low water line is maybe five feet waterward of that seawall, pretty much the limit. So if there is a, a riparian right, a uh, littoral right of the Colony Point folks to build a dock, um, and, and, that, and that right is limited by the location of the low water line, um, that would require the dock to stop well short of where the, the proposed channel is going to be? According to your description of the ruling, yes. All right, thank you. Yeah. I, I just want to be clear just so that we're, is this a freshwater lake or a brackish lake? My understanding was it was a brackish lake. It's, it's probably best described as a seasonal lake. Um, because of its water depth and salt water uh, generally being uh, denser than fresh water, when we have those uh, uh, anomalous events like a uh, hurricane where we have a huge storm surge, that uh, salt water flows into that lake through the interconnecting culverts. There's two culverts that connect the, the lake or the basin with Tarpon Canal. And so that salt water flows into that water body and of course settles at the lower elevations. Um, during the uh, summer months when we have a lot of uh, rainfall, there's uh, a layer of fresh water that dominates the upper levels because it's less dense than, than salt. And uh, so again, seasonally, summer, summertime, it's probably more fresh than salt, probably closer to brackish. In the wintertime, it's probably more salt than fresh because of the exchange with that fresh water at the surface through those culverts. With the density of the waters, is it as prone to a, uh, a seasonal uh, overturn because of uh, the denser salt water? Um, that is one of the concerns with the flushing of, the, of the, the lakes themselves and with the use of aerators and the oxygenation of that lake system, which I don't foresee them terminating that. That creates that vertical circulation pattern that oxygenates the water throughout the water column mm -hmm. and has essentially eliminated that, that concern of the turning over of the water and creating those fish kills, which were happenstance in the past. Okay. Any other questions? And Mr. Delisi would just like to address a couple of items as well. Okay. Um, just, just briefly, uh, Mr. Forge, you brought up a, a number of comp plan policies. I just want to reassure you that we have looked at the comprehensive plan. Uh, the preservation of future land use category would not disallow this type of activity. Uh, in fact, development activities could be allowed in that land use category. Uh, this is a cut through, um, it's a construction activity, uh, and um, uh, there were a number of environmental policies that were cited. Uh, you all just discussed the two-year extension precisely because you know we are coordinating with environmental agencies and there's an incredibly extensive environmental review that goes through this, which includes an analysis of environmental impacts and mitigation that needs to be provided for those impacts. So uh, um, again, uh, I do believe we're in compliance with comprehensive plan um, and uh, nothing further, thank you. Thank you. And finally, I will just conclude uh, and reiterate that we have presented an application uh, that is legally sufficient we have met all the criteria for the granting of a special exception. We would respectfully re uh, request that you approve the special exception. As I indicated before, there's a great number of um, supporters here from the Vivante community. We've asked um, through their association and people um, that they try to keep their comments to a minimum so that the council meeting can move along quickly. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we will open the public comment period. You will have three minutes. We have a lighting system down at the end of the dais, which it is green, and then it goes to yellow when you have 30 seconds left. And when it goes to red, there is a beep, and you will terminate and wrap up at that point. Um, please, uh, we will not be answering any questions. Like I stated earlier, uh, state your name if you would like to, your address, and that you have been sworn. And if you have not been sworn, let us know, and we can swear you in at that time. In fact, if there is, is, there is anybody, anybody that, would, uh, that has not been sworn, that would like to present evidence or testimony, please rise to be sworn by the city clerk at this time. One. Anybody else? You're not talking about swearing at? <laughs> My name is Aaron Wagner. Hold on one oh. second. 
Nobody else out there but Anybody the one? Else? Okay. Okay. Just raise your right hand for me, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in today's proceedings? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Aaron Wagner. I have been sworn. I think I've been sworn at, too. Um, I, I am president of the um, PGI Civic uh, Association, and I just have a very brief comment. Based on the current information of the PGI Board of Directors, they are, we have no objection to this application going forward. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Charlie Cheek, and I have been sworn sworn in. Uh, I know I'm not supposed to ask the question, uh, but I am the POA board president of the Punta Gorda Property Owner Association and the board president of the PGI Section 24. But to keep from slowing this up, we have probably a dozen speakers that, that want to speak, but I have probably another 65 or 70 that want to come up and say something too. But to, in order to shorten this, I thought maybe I could take those 65 or 70 that are not gonna, that were gonna come up here and maybe just have a show of hands of support that we might eliminate 45 minutes to an hour. So if you'll indulge me in that, I would like to do that. Um, usually we take the names of the people so they don't duplicate. Well, here's, yeah, I, I would just simply say this, that, that um, the show of hands is not going to and should not by law influence the decision of the board, but as a courtesy to those here, if you want to just raise your hand in lieu of speaking that, let's just get it over with. I thank you for that. <laughs> Anybody outside? Thank you for that. Basically, if you're raising your hand, you're not going to be coming to the podium. Thank you. There's a squall of 15 hours Okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought that might get you out of here for lunch a little earlier. Uh, good. I had a, um, <clears throat> a very prepared speech that would have probably moved everybody to tears in the room, but I've decided after hearing some of the questions and concerns and statements that I would address some of the issues. I've been involved in this for the last five years, so I've got a lot of knowledge about it, and I want to address uh, some of the, the some of your questions that maybe your attorney maybe didn't have the information on, but I think Councilwoman Matthews asked about the docks. Uh, they were, do we have that, uh, Lisa? Do you have that dock diagram? Okay, All right. we can do that later then. We, there's 255 docks for Vivante and 41 over on the Colony Point side. The question was how many of those docks were gonna be, that we you could foresee would be immediately built. The 76 of them on the west side of the lake uh, would not be built until those condos were, were built. And on the Colony Point side, there's approximately 25 to 30 lots that are not, uh, do not have homes, so they wouldn't. So it looks like about a 185 would be immediately built and constructed. The, the question was, what are the fees for the lake? Right now they cost about $30 a year per homeowner. And with the adoption of the Colony Point folks, it would go down to 28.50 a year. Um, we, did, we do have a board for the Section 24 PGI. It consists of two Vivante homeowners, two Colony Point homeowners, and one developer. There was a question about uh, theft, uh, you know, uh, crime. In our budget from day one, we've, we've allowed for certain things such as mitigation for mangroves, seagrasses. We also put in there a uh, budget for two years of patrol with the sheriff's department. So we've, we've taken all that into, under consideration. So I just wanted to clear that up. And uh, the other thing was, uh, the study shows there's 850 docks gonna be needed in the future for, Vivant, uh, for Punta Gorda. And no doubt the taxpayers are gonna be having to pay for that. 
but common sense would tell me that somewhere if you're going to build 850 docks, you're going to have to you're going to have to eliminate some mangroves. Well, we're we're going to have to eliminate some too, but we're going to mitigate that with the mangrove bank. It just seems like. Uh, private sector would be building 300 of these, uh, which would save the taxpayers a lot of money. So that's really about all I have to cover. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. So we hope you approve this. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, folks. My name was Mark Hoskins. I live in Vivante. <clears throat> I've been a resident of Punta Gorda for nine years. Uh, for what little it's worth, I am a prior president of the Vivante Condominium Association. Uh, I want to tell you that uh, I've met Brian Stock, the developer here, and uh, he is an honorable person, uh, a, a great individual, and uh, we're glad that he's backing this project. I want to talk, I know I only get three minutes, I won't even use that. I want to talk about the Mike Heyman's rule. The Mike Heyman's rule is apparently that if there's a zoning issue before the council, what the objector should do is wait until 4.40 p.m. the day before the hearing and then file a declaratory judgment action and then come in here and then say that we should wait the two, one, two, three years before the court decides the declaratory judgment uh, before anything is done. And so the kindest thing I can say about the Mike Heyman's rule is that there is no such rule for obvious reasons. Then there's the Max Fogarty, I hope I'm pronouncing Max's name correctly, rule. The Max Fogarty rule apparently is that if there's a single mangrove anywhere in the area or a single snail darter that we can't have any kind of development in the city of Punta Gorda. And the kindest thing I can say about the Max Fogarty rule is that, of course, there is no such rule. I also find it rather ironic that Colony Point, which is apparently built on fill after knocking down a bunch of mangroves, comes here to tell us that we can't disturb a snail or that we can't knock down a mangrove to, to put a 60-foot wide channel out into the river. So I, there is no such rule, and uh, the reasons are obvious. The other thing I wanted to address is Lisa uh, Hannon's comments, because it was argued when Mr. Fogarty got up that due consideration was not given to your own staff, that they did not analyze the proper criteria. And I think that that's absolutely incorrect. Uh, you folks are aware that Chapter 163 of the statutes in Florida mandates, requires that cities adopt a comprehensive plan. Punta Gorda did that. Uh, they had a 2025 plan, as you folks are aware, that was amended and expanded to a 2040 comprehensive plan. Lisa looked at that plan and uh, incorporated all of the proper uh, discretion and incorporated the proper section of it. Section 2B of that plan applies. Her report specifically refers to that. And Sir, I won't you have exceeded your three minutes. I'm sorry, but our buzzer is not buzzing, so wrap oh. it up. <laughs> okay. The city shall promote joint ventures, development or redevelopment which support and promote public access from the Peace River to the city. And it talks about enhancement and boat usage and so on. Thank so you. that has all been uh, addressed by Lisa. Sorry I ran over, thank you. Thank you. My name is Ron Cruz and I've been sworn in. My wife and I moved here from Minnesota where we, we lived on a body of water and we had a boat um, at the end of our yard. And we enjoyed nothing more than having company come over, getting on the boat, and we could drive or take the boat directly into town, directly to the shopping, just very much like Punta Gorda. When we actually moved here, we ended up renting at Vivanti and loved it so much that we 
we bought a property in Vivanti. <coughs> Initially, we, um, we were very concerned because they don't have docks and they don't have the ability to get in the water, but we saw that it had potentially looked like it should have a cut through. We thought that might happen in the future. So in the meantime, we bought a boat that we trailer. We keep it under the building and we figured it's no big deal, but it is a big deal. You know, if we wanna go fishing, our thought was we could go down to Ponce, but Ponce doesn't open till after the sun comes up and it closes before the sun goes down. And fishing is before and after sunup. So that didn't work for us. Also, during the season, we've, especially during the season, we've had many times where we trailered our boat down to Ponce only to find out that there wasn't anywhere to park the trailer. And then we went to Lashley Park and they also were filled. And many times we just turned around and went home. So the, the bottom line is, there, there's more, more um, landings, there's more trailering facilities needed, and the, the whole Punta Gorda area is growing, and it's only gonna become worse. So here's an opportunity where we can have, even though these docks are gonna benefit us primarily at Vivanti, it will take pressure off. For every person that has a boat on a lift at or on a, at a slip at Vivanti, potentially frees up one trailer parking spot, not just for the residents, but also for the guests that drive all the way here from other locations. Um, then my, my final comment is that we are first and foremost a boating community, and I think just about any objection that I've heard can be overcome just by realizing that we are first and foremost a boating community. If you buy a property on a golf course just to have the scenery, you have to put up with the golf balls. There's, the, and thanks, and I, I would hope that you approve this. Thank you very much. Good morning, my name is Bill Stevens and I have been duly sworn in and I'm a resident of Avante. Uh, I'm a retired uh, master Maine guide uh, from Maine. Uh, we've lived here since 2012. My specialties were fishing, hunting, boating, and wilderness camping. Most of my life has been spent in the outdoors, and that's one of the reasons we chose here to, to come to Punta Gorda. And here's a quote right off the Punta Gorda website. Punta Gorda's catchphrase, it's happening on the harbor, reflects our reputation as festive waterfront cities surrounded by majestic Charlotte Harbor. With multiple points of access, the harbor draws sailboats, cruisers, sports fishermen, as well as kayakers and paddleboarders. Our waterfront amenities include full service marinas, boat launches, fishing piers, and beautiful waterfront parks and trails. We recently received many accolades, including Marina of the Year, top 10 places to sail, and number 15 best yachting town. Punta Gorda is also unique in that many of its residential lots are canal front. The city's canal maintenance districts provide and repair and placement over 110 miles of seawalls, a valuable benefit to the Punta Gorda community. Uh, and I've heard people over the last couple of years consistently say that that lake is not of high quality water, and some even say it's dead. And as a f fly fisherman, I'm gonna submit these two photos of a two foot snook and a three foot tarpon that I caught on a fly rod right from the, my backyard in that pond. And two weeks, three weeks ago, I caught a three foot, two foot alligator. I cut the line on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and again, um, like people have said, when my wife and I trailer boat, we're making two round trips a day when we go from Vivanti to where we store it, back to Ponce Park. When we're done, we go back to where we store it, and we come back to Vivanti. If this is proven and is, and is approved and we build them, that's traffic that's not gonna be on our streets. So the project is good for the city and I respectfully ask that you, you approve it. And I'd like to submit these photos. Thank you. Uh, good morning, my name is Steve Nelson. I have been uh, sworn. I'm currently the uh, president of the Vivante Condominium Association uh, and I'm also a co-signer on the uh, special permit and special application before you. Uh, I'm also the vice president of the Punta Gorda Isles Section 24 Association, uh, which was an association that we um, properly noticed and uh, held a meeting of all of the owners uh, and duly elected uh, officers. 
I, I bring that up because it's one of these things you can't really have both ways, which I would agree with Mr. Hammond on that. Um, and I certainly would agree with uh, Sherry when she testified as the owner, excuse me, as the condo president for Colony Point. Uh, she does represent those people, even though all of them may not be in, in complete sync with her. I think likewise, um, uh, I represent those owners of Vivante, and I represent those owners of the Colony Point uh, lots. And so uh, those things are very uh, similar to me. We have um, been working on this for over five years. Uh, I've been working on it for more than five, five years as we try to find a, a way to open up the lake. The lake just begs itself to be opened. And we have always tried as we do that to come up with win-win solutions, both for our neighbors and for ourselves. When we came up with the design, we thought that going and then turning right behind Colony Point would be helpful to them because it would help them build docks. As it turns out, that is correct. That's what Hans uh, has talked to us about. We thought coming straight out where there's an existing wrap jetty along Colony Point Drive is not going to be a detriment to those people accessing uh, the lake because the lake is too, uh, excuse me, not the lake, uh, accessing the harbor there because the harbor is, is too narrow and uh, there's an existing wrap jetty so it's kind of hard to haul your um, kayak or anything across that wrap jetty. They'd have to go to the back of their property where they do have access through the Tarpon Canal. And as I mentioned, we are blood brothers. We've, uh, the fill of uh, Vivante uh, Lake when they dug it out is what created uh, the Pollock's lot, uh, which is now worth over a million dollars. So you really can't have it both ways. That, uh, and the, also created Colony Point. And so we will continue to um, try to find positive solutions with our neighbors. Uh, as we go through this process, this isn't the end of it. We'll be working with the EPA and the Fish and Wildlife and the Corps of Engineers, and they will modify some of the things that we uh, think we have planned right now. And as those things impact us, we'll continue to offer opportunities with our neighbors to uh, talk about how we might mitigate that. Uh, we want to continue to be good neighbors, and we look forward to uh, working through the process with them. So thank you all very much for your patience this morning and your open-mindedness. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, we have no buzzer, so if you see the red light, just wrap it up for me, thanks. <laughs> uh, my name is Ian Campbell. I am a owner and resident of a condo in uh, Vivante. Uh, but more importantly, I'm a taxpayer and a resident of Punta Gorda. And it's through my being resident and taxpayer of Punta Gorda that I looked at this as a, uh, a process and a, good, and a project. Um, it's expected that this initiative is, I'm going to read a little bit here, but uh, so it's expected this initiative will benefit the condo owners present and future in Vivante and the owners of uh, property on Colony Point Drive whose property is adjacent to Vivante Lake, but it also benefits the city of Punta Gorda in general and aligns with the city council's objectives and plans. Specifically, <clears throat> the cut through at Vivante Lake boat slips are consistent with the City of Punta Gorda's strategic plan goal to coordinate with stakeholders in promoting Punta Gorda as a boating, fishing, and cycling community. Additionally, the cut through and Vivante Lake boat slips are consistent with the City of Punta Gorda goal to establish a long-range plan that ensures the infrastructure is in place to meet projected growth demands. Additionally, the cut through and Vivante Lake boat slips are consistent with the City of Punta Gorda fiscal year 2018 strat plan action item to provide additional harbor access in PGI. And finally, the cut through and Vivante Lake boat slips are consistent with the City of Punta Gorda fiscal year 2018 strat plan goal to achieve status as a waterfront destination for land and water visitors. <coughs> The 296 proposed boat slips, of which 41, as we've been told, are planned for Colony Point Drive, <clears throat> that lots that are not part of Vivante represent a 29% increase in the number of slips in the area when compared to the current public slips in Fisherman's Village, Lashley Park, Isles Yacht Club, and Burnt Store Marina. Discounting Burnt Store Marina because of its distance, the Vivante Lake boat slips represents a 125% increase 
in the immediate Punta Gorda slips. There will be some mitigation <clears throat> or some migration to Vivantia Lake of boats now in these other locations and the general impact is freeing up the uh, boat slips for use by other residents of Punta Gorda. So the cut through and Vivante Lake boat slips <clears throat> align initiative aligns perfectly with all of the stated goals, <clears throat> missions and action items and allows this city council to accomplish these with zero cost to the city while undoubtedly increasing the tax base of the city. This is a unique win-win-win situation for Punta Gorda and which is why as a resident of Punta Gorda, I support this project. I hope you approve it. Thank you. Uh, good morning, my name is uh, Bill Dick. I've been duly sworn. I'm a resident of Avanti as well. Members of the council, good morning. My name is Bill Dick and I have been wintering at Vivanti for the past 11 years. I am a three year past Commodore of the Mount Stony Yacht Club on Long Island, where I was instrumental in building a 100 slip docking facility and a clubhouse for our members. I am a 100 ton captain and co-chair of the cruising committee at the Isles Yacht Club and a retired engineer. I chose Vivanti for two salient reasons. One, to have a view of Charlotte Harbor, and two, it was clear to me that the original developer had intended for the lake to be open to the harbor, given its configuration and dog leg leading to the harbor. Additionally, I was led to believe that this lake opening was permitted sometime in the past, and based on the testimony I heard here, apparently it had been. If one walks or drives or boats or views aerial overviews of the Punta Gorda area, it is clear that the overall concept of Punta Gorda was to be a boating community. Further, it looks closely. Most single family homes and multifamily complexes that are adjacent to waterways have their own private docks. I currently keep my boat on a dock behind someone else's home here in Punta Gorda. It would be great if the Vivanti residents and the 41 landowners of Colony Point could dock their boats behind their homes as well. My wife and I have been boating since we were kids. In the mid 90s, we moved aboard our 42 foot catch and circumnavigated the Caribbean Sea from New York to Venezuela and back, visited most Leeward and, and uh, Windward Islands over the period of three years. We believe that this qualifies us to be water rats. We want to continue to be water rats here in Punta Gorda, but would prefer to have the convenience of docking our boat in our own backyard. I'm younger than I look and I've been an active boater for 60 years. And I can tell everyone in this room that dolphins like nothing more than to come alongside and hear the hum of a motorboat or a sailing vessel as it sloshes through the water. In closing, the Vivanti residents and the homeowners in Long Colony Point ask for nothing more than the vast majority of other homeowners have in close proximity to the water. It is my hope that the city county looks favorably over this request to open the lake to Charlotte Harbor and allow us unfettered access to Charlotte Harbor and beyond. Thank, Thank you. you. If anybody else is planning to speak, please form a line. The, the fire marshal will help you do that. This is the second call for those who would like to speak. Go ahead and migrate that way. I have uh, a couple graphs. If I okay. can display, please. <coughs> My name is uh, Roger Nearing. I'm a Vivanti resident, and uh, I've been a voter for over 42 years. Have you been sworn, sir? And I've been sworn Thank in. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, the document I would like to sh uh, show, uh, the front cover, if, you, if I could. 
It's called Planning for the Future of Recreational Boating Access to Charlotte County Waterways from 2010 to 2050. This document is supported by NOAA, University of Florida, Charlotte County Commissioners, and others. And if I could have the first graph. Th this graph shows the past growth in boating registration in Charlotte County and the state of Florida. The red is state of Florida, and the blue is Charlotte County. Although they appear to track each other, if you look at the numbers, and I know it's very difficult to see it, but if you looked at the numbers at the, on the right, or on the left and on the right, <coughs> you'll find that Charlotte County has actually grown <coughs> twice as fast in boating as uh, the state of Florida has. So uh, <clears throat> that's something to keep in mind. And if I could have uh, the next. Now this one here, it shows its uh, uh, present or pre past and present growth in red. And there's two computer models that have, uh, that uh, actually they're hard to see, but you, you can see them there that uh, predict what the number of boating in Charlotte County. The little red dot I, I put on there is actually where we're at. So the number of boats in this area is increased by a tremendous amount. So in summary, what I'd like to say it stands to reason as the boating community, the number of boats increase, so will the need for storage and docking. The Vivanti cut through will help to fill the needs of more docking for both present and future growth, and also without cost to the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. We will be keeping that for the record, your papers. That's fine. My name is Donald Orr. I live at Vivante and I have been sworn. And I'm not gonna take much of your time because I think there's overwhelming reasons to pass this. But I would like to reach out to the people that aren't in favor of this. Tell them that Vivante is made up of, uh, the, the people who live there are caring, good neighbors. And there should have been other ways to take care of some of this, but. We're not there to party. We're not there to run boats all over the place and make a lot of noise. I, I think we'll be good citizens uh, if and when we get uh, our docks in. I neglect to tell you I'm on the Bondi uh, con Condo Owners Board, and I would reiterate what Steve says, that we'd like to reach out to anyone that would like to support us. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Marilyn Thomas, and I'm a Vivante resident. We've been there for three and a half years. We've owned a, a home in Punta Gorda since 2001, and I have been sworn. Thank you. Um, I support the Vivante Harbor cut-through and boat docks and would ask for the council's support. Punta Gorda is undeniably a boating community. Part of the city's mission statement is, quote, to enhance Punta Gorda's identity as a vibrant waterfront community and one of the most desirable places to live, work, and visit. The city's vision statement reflects citizen input, emphasizing the mission to become a desired waterfront destination, enhancing quality of life, and being a play better place to live, work, and play. Vivati is part of the city's waterfront and part of the whole. The cut-through and boat dockage would enhance Punta Gorda's image and reality as a vibrant waterfront community and give additional housing with boat dock options to residents, retirees, snowbirds, and workforce present and in the future. I believe that we should view the project through the wide angle lens of enhancing our waterfront boating community now and in the future and not through the very narrow view 
of a handful of dissident individuals. Thank you very much. Thank you. Morning. I think it's morning, hopefully. My name is Bill Scully. I own a lot on uh, Colony Point Drive and with the hopes of building a home there in the very near future, and I have been sworn in. Thank you. Uh, my in-laws uh, have a house, and they built a house uh, next door to that. Uh, I wanted to make a comment on a recent publication in the newspaper that mentioned that Colony Point Drive residents have been critical of this venture, and that there's nothing further than the, the truth from that. Uh, myself, my wife, my in-laws next door, and all the landowners on the west side of Colony Point that I've spoken to so far are greatly in favor of this cut going through. Addi additionally, I re recently had the pleasure to attend the first class of the Citizens Academy last week, which I've been able to meet many of you at. Uh, the city council and manager did a great job in presenting an outline of the city's current and future plans. <coughs> One area that was mentioned was the importance of the enhancing the city's tax base. This venture of we, that we're speaking of today would certainly help this endeavor besides the overall positive financial impact it would have on the city and its businesses. Watching boats cruise the harbor is why most people live here. So I'm not sure why others would buy property on or near the water if they didn't want to see a beautiful sail or powerboat slowly cruising by. So with that being said, along with the positive comments that are being presented today, we hope that you support uh, our wishes to create this uh, situation with us. I thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. My name is Stanley Wybranski. I am a resident of Avante. Uh, although my comments are directed toward the council as I have been duly sworn as has my wife who would be with me as well if the line wasn't so long. Uh, I just like to address two points, one of which as just reinforces the gentleman that just stepped in front of me. He caught me by surprise. Although I'm, my comments are to you, they're more directed toward what I'll refer to as the people that are uh, not supportive of, of the uh, proposal that's in front of you now. And one would think that they, if I understand correctly, there are many issues, technical issues, but I uh, don't wanna go there. Uh, one would think that uh, the, the quality of life issue that uh, is of concern to them because things are changing. They don't know quite what to expect uh, or uh, how intimately or remotely it may be involved in their day-to-day uh, -day lives. Uh, I'd like to reinforce what uh, one of the former presenters from uh, Steve Nelson also said, uh, we are good neighbor neighbors and hope to remain good neighbors. Uh, if I was of concern about my quality of life, that's a legitimate concern, I think, okay? Uh, as far as property values, one would think that possibly there's a concern about depreciating property values. In response to those two issues, I would say that, just like it was voiced in front of me, I'm sorry, uh, a minute ago, there's nothing more pleasurable, more enjoyable, more recreational, than being on the water and have boats pass, and the camaraderie between boaters, and the, the tranquility is not destroyed, but is really the quality of life, as far as I am personally concerned, enhanced. Having uh, lived in Vivante for eight years, eight years prior to that, <coughs> uh, we visited on a regular uh, basis, <coughs> annual basis, uh, a very close intimate friends who have a point lot on uh, uh, two blocks from the harbor. Uh, and no one receives more traffic than they do, uh, uh, to my knowledge. And nothing we enjoyed more than being out there and being a part of this boating spectacle. Uh, as far as the property values are concerned, one would think that it can't do anything but enhance anyone's property value as evidenced by all the boat traffic <coughs> close to the harbor and the uh, obvious uh, uh, catastrophic increase in their property values. Thank you, and I hope you approve this uh, application. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Bill Kaufman. I've been sworn in, 
and I have been a resident of Colony Point condominiums for 10 years. And I want to uh, emphasize the fact that we too want to be good neighbors. Uh, I think it's important for all of us to respect our own opinions and to respect others' opinions. I am here to tell you that I have been informed that all 63 owners of our condominium association support our attorney and the Pollock's attorney in their endeavor to uh, have this uh, uh, cut through uh, terminated. <coughs> that still doesn't mean that I don't wanna be a good neighbor and that I don't respect the things that you have uh, come here today to tell us about. I think the um, uh, council, I would like you to really uh, study the issue. Uh, I don't know if I can say this, but I, I would like if you vote either for or against it uh, as a taxpayer, uh, I would appreciate knowing why you have those feelings and, and how you came about them. Because I have uh, just retired, sold my business, had a over 100 employees, and I think it's very important that whether you're an employee or a resident, you need to have the answer of why someone made a decision. When I make decisions, I'm very vocal on why I gave those decisions. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. But I think all of us here deserve, and, and people as taxpayers, deserve from our government the uh, reasons why they decided to vote for or against. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Gwen Ladd. I have lived in Colony Point condos over 10 years. I own there. Um, I've been coming to Ponta Gorda since 80s. Sworn, please. Have you been sworn? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I found Colony, uh, Ponta Gorda in the late 80s and have visited here several times over that time before we retired 10 years ago. Um, what I was looking at is Vivanti's uh, revised application of August 2017 states it will follow the regulations of the GM 15 zoning. Under uh, Punta Gorda's Chapter 6 Boats, Docks, and Waterways, there are several different rules on dock size. Uh, one says if it's in a waterway other than a platted canal dedicated to the public, in no event may that dock extend more than 80 feet from the seawall or mean high water line. Another one says, uh, if it's under a Punta Gorda Isles regulations, moored vessels cannot extend beyond 35 feet uh, when the width of the canal is greater than 125 feet. My question is, has anyone really looked at how long their docks are? Um, I looked at their revised plan, uh, which is now using the GM 15 and not the marina plan that it, you saw earlier in, in prior uh, times they visited you. And when I was using their scale, it looks like their docks are gonna be anywhere from 100 to 135 feet in length. And that's what the scale shows. Um, so that can be some large boats. The proposed 255 uh, boat slips in Vivanti is, the total, is larger than the total of our two city marinas. So this is a lot of boats, not just what boats are in the commercial area. And it was interesting, the original plat that they showed uh, around this body of water that they're talking about at Vivanti, it looked like that was single family lots. That was a small number of lots compared to the number of condos that have changed over the years. So that makes a difference of what used to be a long time ago. And then I wanted to show you, uh, I, we have a unique place and in, a few years ago, when I first came here, there was a young bald eagle sitting in the mangroves that we're all talking about. Ms. Ladd, this was could we could we put, up, put that up on the screen for you, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, so that was I don't know seven years ago. Uh, just a couple years ago, I'm driving down the street with my family, and this 
picked this bald eagle. I was sitting in the field eating. And you can see Levante's in the background. So we are a very unique place. Uh, we have nature all around us. So it's not just the dolphins jumping. We have the osprey fishing. Uh, we've, I've heard about the uh, eagles fishing uh, in the lake in front of us. So there's many things going on here. Please consider all of them and maybe maybe just reduce the number of boats if it happens to fall under one of these GM 15 zoning regulations. Thank you. Thank you. I have been sworn. State your name, please. Barry Ladd. Thank you. Uh, I've heard many people talk about this unique area and I don't understand when there are city and state laws forbidding the destruction of mangroves why they're even proposing it. And I don't know how the council can vote in favor of it when it's breaking these laws. That's probably my misunderstanding. I've heard of talked about this is not a dead lake. This morning there was over 100 birds diving in the waters in front of Colony Point in the harbor. When we drove down here, there were none diving in the harbor of these dead lakes. It just tells you that there's not food fish in there. The only occasional fish gets in there is through one of the culverts at extremely high tide. So that water is gonna be put into our estuary. They're gonna create a, a culvert on one end and attach it into the mangroves on one end to get flow through. So they're actually pumping this contaminated water into the, into the harbor. And they talk about being good neighbors. Would you want some good neighbor to put in a highway in front of your, your building that you bought with the view that you had and the estuary you have and the fish and the wildlife there, and now they're gonna put a canal in front of you with poles on it. Why aren't you being good neighbors and move the location of this cut in front of your condominiums? No, your condominiums are unobstructed by it. You bring it out on the back side in front of your neighbors, your loving neighbors. Please address your comments to the city council. Thank you. Pardon? Address your comments to the city council. Thank you. Excuse me. I apologize. There was a comment on the amount of boats traffic. You're going to have 296 boat docks in this <laughs> pond that are going to come out right in front of these people on the north and west side of Conley Point within 100 feet of their property. So where they had a private condominium, now it's a public drive-through. In comparison, by actual count of the boat slips on Tarpon Inlet from Google Maps, there are less than 100 boats on that canal. So you're going to be three times the boat traffic that we see in our back canal, three times. And what's gonna to happen to the eagle that she showed, the horseshoe crabs, the redfish, and the, and, and the snook. So I ask that the city decline this request. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you're addressing the city council with your comments, please. If I need to go back through the procedures for public comments, I will. My name is Dr. Deborah Lux. I have been duly sworn in. I bought, I, in 1995, I got out of the Navy. I moved to Punta Gorda, Florida. Loved it. Knew that someday I would be moving back here. I paid a high price in 2004 to have one of three full view lots on Colony Point Drive. So I have that beautiful nature, quiet view like Mr. Pollock does. To see nature, I bought it for the quiet. I bought it for the nature. It says it doesn't affect people. My taxes I pay are high because I have this amazing piece of property that I plan to build on and live here forever. The channel, they say it has a negative impact. Well, it has a negative impact. It has a negative impact on me, my property, the nature, the eagles, the horseshoes. When Vivanti was built, after I purchased my property in 2004, it has changed things. They, they, when people bought, 
They bought knowing that they didn't have a boat slip. They bought it because it's a beautiful view of Charlotte Harbor. They bought knowing that they were gonna have to move a boat from point A to point B. Were they guaranteed or promised something that might happen in the future and that's why they bought at a lower price, paying lower taxes? It's very difficult as a single person, as a single lot homeowner on an 80 foot wide piece of property to fight against all these other people who are a condo association. It's a very difficult thing to do. They say about how it's gonna change our quality of life. What about the people who live in the historical district? Is their quality of life changed and worse because they don't live right, direct access on the property? I don't think so. I wonder too, if the people in Vivanti, knowing that they would never have a cut through, would still buy and pay a price. I please request that you do not change this, do not do anything to nature, to wildlife, to the quietness. 300 people plus friends and stuff like that will definitely affect our beautiful, quiet area of Punta Gorda. Thank you. Thank you.